Hi, I'm former NASA astronaut Scott Kelly, and today I'm going to answer some of your questions on Twitter. The first one is from Dirk. So, what is the speed of the ISS? Well, the ISS is in low Earth orbit, and things in low Earth orbit are traveling generally at a speed of around 17,500 miles per hour, which is 25 times the speed of sound, so really, really fast. Sent. Let's see, next question from CC Takato. Would the people on the International Space Station be able to see the effects of the eclipse? Well, we are traveling in orbit around the Earth. We orbit the Earth every 90 minutes. So if you were in the right place at the right time, you would see a big black spot over the Earth, which is the shadow from the moon. On this last eclipse we had, the astronauts were able to get a picture of it, and it was, uh, it was really impressive. Next question. If I died in a spacesuit and was released to drift through space, would I decompose or just be a floating corpse forever? Asking for a friend. Yes, you would decompose rather quickly. It would, I think, quickly get kind of um, not too pleasant. In microgravity, um, and I'm not exactly sure why, but things seem to decompose much quicker. But if you were in low Earth orbit and you were doing a spacewalk from the space station and drifted away, eventually you would you would re-enter the Earth. You'd be, you know, a shooting star. Hopefully, your friends would be able to see you. I miss Scott Kelly's tweets from space. Me too. And is that flower still growing up there? When I was on board the space station, we grew some uh, stuff in space. We grew some lettuce, and uh, after that, we grew something a little bit more complex, which was flowers, uh, zinnias. The idea is if we can grow a flower, maybe we can grow a tomato, and eventually going to Mars, we could use that um, as nutrition. Unfortunately, you know, I had to harvest those flowers and send them back to Earth. I actually have one at home, pressed into a book. But they, we've grown other stuff since then, and, uh, and our plan is to continue to try to grow more complicated stuff. Unfortunately, space flower is no longer with us. Let's see, next question. How many times do you think someone on the bridge of the space shuttle said, punch it chewy, when the launch sequence started? I would imagine for launch, because it's so complicated, risky, incredible experience, that I would guess zero time someone said, punch it, Chewy. But you never know. If I was flying this, I actually wouldn't say punch it, Chewy, because it's not the Millennial Falcon. Chewy wasn't in here. I'd say punch it, R2-D2. He's right there. Okay, from Jason Garcia. Planned on sleeping tonight, but now it's 5 a.m. and Googling, quote, how do astronauts make new oxygen up in a space station for years? I need answers. Well, Jason, I have answers. On the space station, we have a few ways of making oxygen. One is we use a process called electrolysis, so we take water. If this was a water molecule, we would have one big hydrogen, two smaller O2 modules, or I'm sorry, I messed that up. This is the O, and these are the H's. The two little ones are the H's. So electrolysis will, will separate the two H's from the O, and with another O, we can create O2 two oxygen molecules, like this. Oxygen, which we then breathe, of course. If you're in the International Space Station, what time is it? This isn't a riddle. I'm genuinely, genuinely curious how they keep time. So we're orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes, so we have a sunrise and a sunset, either or, every 45 minutes, generally speaking. And we have these control centers that are that are all around the Earth. We have in Houston and uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Cologne, Germany, Moscow, and in a place called Scuba, Japan. You know, we need a standard of time, of course, so we operate on Greenwich time. And the reason we chose Greenwich time was because the people that work in the control center in Moscow, most of them have to get to work on the Moscow subway. They don't really have an option to drive or walk or ride a bike. So the time we used, Greenwich time, was very conducive to the folks in Moscow using the metro, which is not open 24 hours a day. So that's why we use Greenwich time, because of the subway schedule in Russia. Right. Is suspended animation a viable option for space travel, say to planets like Mars or further? Well, I think when we go to Mars, the way we're going to get there is going to probably take around 200 days to get there. You'll spend a year on the surface, and it'll take around 200 days to get back. Now, certainly if our 
uh, technology improves, you could potentially get there uh, faster. So I think for Mars, it's not really um, something that's necessary. You know, if you were going to go to Jupiter or Saturn, the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, or even further away, and it's going to take many, many years to get there, many, many years to get back, if you could develop a technology like suspended animation, that would be really, really good. But I'm not sure if anyone's actually working on that. I, I think at this point that might be more, you know, science fiction than science fact. But you never know. We'll see. Any physical, mental, residual effects that are still with you after your year in space? I don't think so. Um, as At least as far as I could tell, which, you know, I don't have any symptoms. I don't have physical symptoms of being in space for uh, a long period of time. Mental issues, I don't know. I'd probably deny it if I did. But then there are the things that you can't see. Like when I was on the space station, I got a lot of radiation, for instance. Perhaps there are effects from that that I don't even know about, and hopefully I'll never find out. I don't think I will. Just a simple question. Could astronauts hold their breath in space instead of wearing the whole uniform? Uh, no, you couldn't do that without any atmospheric pressure out in space. All the gases that are in solution in our blood they come out of solution and turn back into a gas. Kind of like when you open a uh, carbonated bottle of soda, the pressure is decreased, and that's why you see all the bubbles coming out. Well, that's exactly what would happen with our blood if we didn't have a spacesuit on, which would kill us within a few minutes. Not to mention, without the pressure, holding your breath would be really hard. You ever wonder what happens to your, your organs in space? Like other shit floats around, do your organs float around your body or nah? Everything floats, including your guts. You can feel that. I mean, you can feel like your insides don't feel quite normal. Certain, you know, processes that we have to deal with every day, particularly, you know, using the restroom takes time because our body likes to have gravity telling us which direction to push stuff. So when everything's floating, including your organs and everything inside you, it uh, creates some challenges. Also, the blood floats inside us, and that's why you see at times astronauts in space have really big, you know, their heads are swollen initially because all the fluid is redistributed throughout our bodies and you get this big-headed astronaut. You know, eventually you get rid of some of that fluid and you go back to uh, maybe almost looking like normal. Next question. What was the most exciting or fascinating science experiment you conducted in your year in space? It's kind of hard to choose. You know, I, I, would, I would offer two experiments. One was we did some experiments with uh, rodents where we dissected them and we, we appreciated them giving their lives to uh, us for, for science. And uh, that science was involved in understanding the physical effects that occur when we're in space, like bone loss, effects on our vision, which we have some negative effects we're trying to study. You know, that was challenging, I would say fascinating. Um, sort of exciting because it's very meticulous work that takes a really long time. And it's important to us on Earth, understanding uh, processes that occur in space at a very rapid rate, very similar to how we age on Earth. We lose bone mass, muscle mass as we age, but in space it happens much more rapidly. The other experiment that I really liked was the, uh, the flowers that we grew, I think. It's uh, very, very relatable to people on Earth and also has implications for exploration as we go further out into space. Having living things, I think it'll also help from a you know, psychological aspect. So, you know, those two, uh, growing plants and uh, working with the rodents were, for me, the most exciting or fascinating science experiment uh, that I did in my year in space. Do you know how people get vacation blues? How do astronauts cope with coming back to Earth after seeing space? It's not easy, you know, when, uh, when you get back from uh, space after, you know, working there for a short or long time, you generally miss it. But you, I think you deal with it like people deal with everything that is a, a challenge in your life. You know, you appreciate the experience you had and then you move on. One of my uh, former astronaut colleagues, Gennady Padalka, he says, when we are on Earth, we miss space, and when we're, on, when we're in space, we miss Earth. You definitely miss space when you're back on Earth. Maybe someday I'll get to go again. Maybe with you, Lenny. That was our last question, and uh, thank you for your attention, and thank you for all the great questions. Bye-bye.